Hello, my name is Justin Johnson, G0KSC of Innov Antennas and the G0KSC website where you can uh, acquire your own uh, antennas or build your own antennas from the designs I provide for free. Just a note on the uh, YouTube channel, uh, all of these uh, videos and tutorials will be on the Innov Antennas YouTube page, so please do subscribe. This is fairly small at the moment, we've just got a couple of uh, videos that are on there. Uh, and today we're going to be starting part three, which is an elaboration on what we did in part two, drilling down a little bit more. But uh, first off, the G0KSC site is here, g0ksc.co.uk. And as you can see, there's a number of designs uh, which can all, all be replicated within um, EasyNeck down this left hand side here and across the, the toolbars at the top. And uh, those are my early work and for the more recent work, um, these are available through my business or commercial website in event tennis. So uh, to the uh, the project in hand um, we have this file here which is the one that we were working on last time a 9 element 144 OWA or optimized wideband array for 144 megahertz. So to open this up in EasyNet we're going to just double click and this should then open up. So we're going to, um, to look at uh, in a little bit more detail some of what we did before. Uh, I mentioned uh, about the antenna notes before. When you're saving a file, what you can do is open up um, an attached file here and just create uh, information about the versions that you've been um, looking at uh, and what you've been changing. Um, so it could be that um, dipole um, three millimeters uh, longer. Um, and it might be that you'd added a version number before that and when you save uh, this that will now be uh, attached to the file just for um, later on. So what we did first off is we had a look at the, uh, the azimuth plots here. I'm just going to close this. Oh and one point of note um, on here now as I learn this software and get a bit more familiar with it uh, there's some more features and functions that you will see. Now when I'm moving my mouse you can see that there's a little yellow halo around it. When I um, right click you'll see the green target. So every time that green target sign appears you know that I've um, uh, performed a right click if I haven't said so already. So we had a look at this last time. Uh, this is the, the plot for our 9 element antenna. Uh, and down here we can see uh, front to back um, the uh, beam width, side lobes or side lobe gain um, and then front to side ratio as well. Now what we can do if we go into uh, the, the data fields is I, I've just clicked and added these pink lines here which show that 3 dB beam width. Now I mentioned about this before uh, that 3 dB means that um, it, it's the width of the, uh, the transmitted beam um, drip, dropping no more than 3 dB. So we're on 13.83 dB in the, the, the main focal point of the main load. And at these points here is where your 3 dB beam width ends. Now it's important to note at this point is that you don't get something for nothing. Not when it comes to Yagi's. So the longer the boom of course the more gain you will get if the antenna is optimized in the same way with the same beam or same bandwidth. But that gain comes from somewhere and where that gain comes from is a compressing of these 3 dB points. So consider this to be a three dimensional image. Those two points will become closer together and the gain here, the extra gain is coming from the compression of this side and this side. So when I say you don't get something for nothing, what I mean is that you're going to get a higher level of gain but it's going to be over a much narrower beam width. So We've pressed the FF or far field plot to get the azimuth plot. What we can do here is on the plot type, click that and now click elevation. When you click elevation and then press OK, we've now got a completely different view. This is a slice view of the antenna looking at it sideways. So this is a horizontal Yagi uh, that is parallel to the ground. And what we're now doing is we're looking, we're, we're a side of that uh, and we're looking at what the pattern would look like if there was a cross section cut through that field. And you can see it doesn't look so clean in the elevation plane. And you also have these side lobes um, here. Now often 
um, it's, it's really important to suppress these because often if uh, uh, with some Yagis um, these elevation lobes can be very large up and below the antenna. Now although when an antenna is placed above ground the there are ground reflections and the shape of the pattern looks very different. The intensity of this field strength and the, and the positioning of these um, fields and where it transmits and picks up from are still there beneath the antenna. So if your antenna is on a mast directly above your shack um, or above your house or wherever it is and let's say for instance on this lobe that was very large towards the ground um, then you're likely to or you're much more likely to cause interference or to receive noise from inside the house and that's one of the reasons why the elevation plane needs to be controlled and needs to be looked at so again we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail when we go into uh, some of the the later um, videos where we, we're talking about the optimization of the antennas themselves but let's go back onto this plot type for a moment and click the three-dimensional plot now by default this goes in a step size of five degrees to make it a little bit quicker but we're going to change that to one degree um, in order that we get a, a bit more detail and then we run the plot you can see it takes a little bit longer because there's a lot more processing to do it's got all those slices to do in the uh, in every plane and all the way around the antenna so from this now we can see this is the three-dimensional plot and by clicking and holding the mouse I can spin that around and get a, a better indication and it shows you the line where the slices that we've taken from here uh, and what you can do is if you click this line um, you can see in degree segments um, how the antenna looks out to the sides and then back again back into the full um, main lobe uh, you can switch this off as well, the two-dimensional plot, or put it back on again um, and uh, switch between elevation and azimuth. But the important part, I guess, here is one of the limitations, um, just from a processing perspective, really, is this step size when a 3D plot is, is performed will only go down to one degree. Whereas if you were to go to the azimuth plot, for instance, you can go to point one of a degree. Not particularly important of a model like this, um, but when you're going on to a very long 432 and 23 SEMS um, models, if we're referring to handband antennas, then it's good to be able to see in that kind of granularity because there are some very small spike lobes that you would not otherwise see if that wasn't uh, taken into account. So just uh, going back onto the three-dimensional plot for a moment, there's something I want to show here. Uh, which is, is shown in the, the main display. Now you can see here this model contains loss and you can see that it says with the average gain um, it's 0 0.983. Now with that, um, that is a, a, a due to the fact that there is aluminium in play. The wires themselves are made from aluminium. Now if I was to change that to zero and then run the model again. We should see it as near as damn it 0.0. .0. And it's just under that, you, as you can see, 0 0.02 is the, uh, the, the figure. So uh, the, the, the model is fairly accurate as it is. In one of the earlier videos, we were talking about the differences in the models. It was in the version in the first one, the introduction to EasyNet. Um, and one of the issues that we're faced with uh, when modeling antennas which have bends and tapers in the same element is the accuracy and if that model isn't particularly accurate that can be seen here by switching off the wires uh, the wire loss and putting it to zero if this is a plus figure then there's something of an error in the uh, in the antenna and we need to revisit the segmentation density uh, in order to do that. So again, that's something that we'll cover in some of the later uh, videos as we move uh, as we move forward here. <coughs> okay, so let's uh, let's have another look at the SWR plot here and take a view as to how uh, that looks and where it's sitting. So it's sitting around 146 at the moment. So now if we take this um, a change to uh, 145 and look at the the SWR plot between 144 and 145. 
we can see it's, uh, it's, it's peaking up here and by clicking on the line it will show us what frequency that is and what the SWR is at this, uh, at this particular point. But what I wanted to do also here, before we go on to tuning the antenna um, and making it sit where we um, maybe prefer to have it sitting, which is at 144.3, um, I want to, I, I spoke on the last one about uh, the differences between dipoles and uh, the Yagi and, the, and how the gain is worked out. Uh, and it's when uh, you're watching these things back and reflecting upon them that you feel that maybe if you're not familiar with the software or, or how uh, the antennas work, that this may not be completely obvious. So I'm opening up the wires window now and I'm going to put also the, um, the antenna and bring the antenna into view. Uh, and I'm zooming in uh, as much as possible. And then what I'm going to uh, do here is I'm going to highlight the first element, which is the reflector. Uh, and click on that and delete it. Now what was the driven element is now the first element in his, his element number one. So I'm going to get rid of all of the directors <coughs> and um, if I don't highlight any element and just click on the delete it asks me which wires I want to delete. So I'll put two to eight and now um, I have just the, the driven element. Now this is not going to be particularly tuned uh, for use on its own. Um, what we're doing here is we're just going to have a look at the radiation pattern. To get the, the lowest possible SWR, it would, the, the length would need to be um, moved around. And the reason for that, or the, the lengthened or shortened. And the reason for that is that when you place elements in front or below of the, the Yagi, it alters uh, impedance and the, the shape that the antenna needs to be. So just for point of exercise, this is the azimuth plot as we see it now, and you can see that we've got um, the, a, a lobe on each side. This is the cross section looking at the horizontal dipole, uh, and we're on the ground as well looking at that side on. If I change this to the elevation plane and play that now, you can. this is looking down, so you can see it's perfectly, um, uh, it, it's Sorry, this is to the side on, um, but this is um, this is perfectly symmetrical as you can see. So what I'm going to do is is go to the uh, azimuth plot, um, and uh, this is uh, um, looking down on the antenna. The other was uh, was side on uh, in free space, and I'm going to save this. You see, I can say save trace. So uh, that's the dipole. I'm going to save this. Now one of the useful features here is um, we can go back and I'm pressing the edit button in the wires window and now undoing the changes that I've made. So now I'm back to where I was with my uh, original Yagi with all of the elements in place. So really to give a, a perspective as to how this looks I'm now going to add that dipole trace so we can see the difference, the delta between the dipole and the Yagi. Now, um, that's the overlay. You can see that that's the dipole highlighted against the Yagi. <coughs> but what I will do is I'm going to change um, the recalled trace so that it's now um, red and easier to see. So what I did there again is pressed on the options and colors, recalled trace, uh, changed um, the, sorry, I didn't do that correctly. I changed one to be red rather than blue and now you can see uh, much easier the difference between the dipole field strength and the Yagi. So you can see how much has been reduced on this side of the dipole at least now on this side of the antenna. Likewise if we now um, remove uh, the, uh, the added trace so we come back to the Yagi Let's see what happens if I just take off the reflector uh, and then run. You can see that there's still directivity there. We've lost around a dB of gain uh, and there's still a little bit of front to back. And, and to be perfectly honest, if you were to optimize the lengths of those elements, um, you probably wouldn't do a bad job and would get a, a fair amount of front to back um, back again. But uh, the, the reflector is always a, a good point to, or a good um, uh, element to have in place for obvious reasons. But while the pattern doesn't look too bad, 
if we run the uh, SWR plot here, you can see that that's now looking very different. Um, so there would be a hell of a lot of work to do if we was going to um, do something or, or create a, an antenna out of that uh, without a reflector. Uh, so too, if I was to take off the last element here uh, and then again run a plot, you can see that we've still lost loads of front to back. We haven't lost quite as much of the gain. Um, <clears throat> and when we run the SWR, the, the whole antenna is shifted down. Now, adjustments could be made to bring that back up. Um, but uh, uh, in essence, one of the, the main things that will make a difference is by shortening the distance between the last uh, reflector and the second from last uh, reflector. Once you do something like that, then the, um, the front to back will start to come in, uh, as well as reducing the length of that last uh, director two. So I'm going to edit this and put it as 425. Um, and then you would see that it's now already up to 16.44. Um, so this answers another question which is often asked, which is, can I just add an element on or can I remove one? And no, you can't. It doesn't, it, it will have some form of performance. But as far as SWR is concerned and as far as front to back is concerned, and uh, in some respects gain, uh, gain is always uh, the the ironically the last thing to um, to be lost. Uh, then there's a lot more work that has to be done there. So this is a fill through of the um, the Yagi, how it, it works in comparison to the dipole, uh, and really what we need to do in order to get um, uh, um, editing done within the wires window. Um, on the next video, I'm going to go into a little bit more into segmentation and also adjustments on the antenna for optimization. Thanks for watching.